we're going to be looking at the dot product of two vectors in R2 or R3. So let's get started with the definition of a dot product. So the dot product between two vectors, V and W, if V and W are defined as such, is given by the following formula. Now if I write V and W in the other notation that we've looked at, A1, B, A2, A3, and W equal to B1, B2, B3, the dot product is not very complicated to find. What we do is we multiply the corresponding components and add them. So A1, B1 plus A2, B2 plus A3, B3. So that gives me the dot product. Now, first thing to notice, the dot product, and the reason it's got a special name dot product and not just product, is because we're going to define a different type of product between two vectors. So if I talk about the dot product, notice that what I end up here with is a real number. Because those components are all real numbers, so I end up with one real number. So the dot product of two vectors does not give me a vector. It gives me a real number. So just take note of that. But let's play a bit with the dot product and see what it gives me. All right, one of the nicest uses of the dot product is, and we're not going to prove this, but it can be proven, that if I've got the angle theta between the vectors v and w, now, theta is between 0 and 180 degrees, or if you're working in radians, theta is between 0 and pi. Now, the reason we stick between 0 and pi is because if I've got two vectors, v and w, let's just look in R2, if I've got v and w, the angle between, I'm going to look for the shortest angle. I'm not going to go look for the biggest one. So it's always going to be between 0 and 180 degrees. If the vectors are this way around, then this is the angle I'm looking for. So take note, between 0 and 180 degrees, then the dot product is the same as the magnitude of V times the magnitude of W times cos theta. Now I say this can be proven, we're not going to prove it, but we're going to use this. Now this is very nice because this helps us get to the angle between two vectors. We looked at the previous video, just how to find the angle a vector makes with the positive x-axis, but this helps me find the angle between two vectors, which is very handy. So what this means is that cos of theta is going to be V's dot product with W over the magnitude of V times the magnitude of W. And that'll give me the angle between V and W. So this is one of the great uses of the dot product. So just take note. What happens if the dot product between two vectors is equal to zero? So if I do that calculation, and we'll look at examples like that, and it's very possible to get this dot product be equal to zero. All right, now we're working with non-zero vectors. We're not working with zero vectors because they're just boring and that won't get us anywhere. But if I've got two non-zero vectors and their dot product is zero, we know their magnitudes aren't zero. So that means that cos of theta is going to be equal to zero. Now, where is cos equal to zero? What's the angle of theta? Well, if that's what cos we're sticking between 0 and 180 degrees, so we're right there at 90 degrees, or pi over 2. So theta is 90 degrees. Now this is a lovely property. If my dot product is 0, I've got my angle between the two vectors, 90 degrees, so the vectors are perpendicular. And that's very nice about dot product. All right, so let's look at these vectors we've got here. Let's find the dot product with V and W. And let's get their angles in between them. The dot product is 1 times 4, so that's 4 plus. 3 times 1, so it's 3 plus. Minus 2 times 3, so that's minus 6. So 4 plus 3 minus 6 gives me 1. All right. Now, how do I find the angle between them? We know cos of theta is the dot product divided by the product of the magnitude. So let's calculate that quickly. The magnitude of V is the root of 1 squared plus 3 squared plus minus 2 squared. So that's root 14. The magnitude of W is the square root of 4 squared, so it's 16, plus 1 squared, which is 1, plus 3 squared, which is 9. So that's root 26. So what we have is cos theta is 1 divided by root 14 times root 26. 
and you can calculate theta. You'll have to round off. Theta is approximately equal to 87 degrees. So with your calculator, second function cos of that fraction. So let's look at the next one, V and W. Let's start with the dot product. 4 times minus 8 is minus 32. Minus 1 times 2 is minus 2. And 2 times 4, minus 4 is minus 8, so that's minus 8. So the dot product is minus 42. All right, let's look at the magnitudes, because we want to find the angle between them. The magnitude of V is the root of 16 plus 1 plus 4, which is square root 21. And the magnitude of W is equal to the root of 64 plus 4 plus 16. So that is the root of 64, 74, 84. So what you're going to see is cos theta is then minus 42 over the root of 21 times the root of 84. Now, if you look at that fraction, that is going to give you 1 minus 1. So where's cos theta equal to minus 1? You can use a calculator, but you don't really need to. Cos theta is equal to minus 1 here at 180 degrees. So this angle theta is then 180 degrees. Now, if you look closely at vectors v and w, hopefully you notice that w is a scalar multiple of v. w is minus 2 times v. So that tells me from the properties of scalar multiples that W is in the opposite direction of E and it's twice the magnitude. Now, if we take a look at V and W, the angle in between is 180 degrees, so it makes sense that the one is a scalar multiple of the other. If it was a positive scalar multiple, I would have the dot product, use the dot product to get the angle, to get to an angle of zero degrees. So, some properties of dot products. Use dot product with dv is the same as v's dot product with u. Now, we're not going to prove any of these. They can all be proven. But just observe for now. Use dot product with some scalar multiple of v is the same as the scalar multiple of u's dot product with v, and so on. And we've got the dot product being distributive over addition. Now, this is all the dot product. In the next video, we're going to be looking at the cross product, which is another type of multiplication, if you want to think of it like that. But for vectors u and v, the dot product of v with itself is the magnitude squared, which would be easy to prove in R2 and R3, and u and v are perpendicular if and only if the dot product is zero. And that's what we looked at. So the dot product tells us something about the angle, and we've looked at examples like that. So for the last example, let's look at making use of the dot product to determine if a triangle with those vertices is a right angle triangle. Now I'm in R3, P, Q, and R are all ordered triplets. So they are points in R3. They are not vectors. But yet the dot product works with vectors. So what I need is I need to generate some vectors and see if they're perpendicular. Because if we look at P, Q, and R, wherever they're lying, we need to look at the vectors that they generate to see if the dot product between vectors gives me zero. So let's take a look at the vectors. P, Q. So P to Q, so that's the vector. 1 to 5, so 5 minus 1 is 4. 5 minus 3 is 2. 5 minus minus 1 is 6. Q, R. Q, R, so start at Q, end at R, so it's 2 minus 5 is minus 3. 7 minus 5 is 2, 0 minus 5 is minus 5. And then I'm going to look at the vector PR. So from P to R, 1 to 2 is 1, 3 to 7 is 4, and from minus 1 to 0, 0 minus 1 is 1 is 1. Now, just take note, we're looking at PQ, QR, and PR, but we will have the same results if we looked at QP rather than PQ, because if I, well, let's first get the 90 degree angle, see if there's a 90 degree angle, then we'll talk about that. 
So we're going to have to look at dot products. PQ's dot product with QR is 4 times minus 3, so it's minus 12 plus 4 minus 30. Now that's not going to give me 0. Because I want a dot product of 0, then I know I've got two vectors that are perpendicular. So if I look at PQ's dot product with PR, I get 4 times 1, 2 times 4, so it's plus 8, 6 plus 1 times 1 is plus 6. And again, that's not going to give me 0. So let's look at the other option. QR's dot product with PR is minus 3 plus 8 minus 5, and that gives me to, gets me to 0. So we know those vectors are perpendicular. Now, if I've got QR perpendicular to PR, wherever P is, I've got QR perpendicular to PR. QR is also going to be perpendicular to RP. So we don't have to look at QP or RQ or RP. We can just look at three vectors made up from those vertices. And that's how we check if a triangle is a right angle triangle. So definitely we know that QR's vector is perpendicular. You can use that notation if you want to PR. So it's a right angled triangle. So is that a right angle triangle? Yes. In the next video, we're going to look at the cross product, and that's a different type of multiplication if you want to look at multiplication of vectors.